Hello everyone, this is Professor Nchi Kum from Unimas. In this video, I'm going to give you a lecture on how to derive the design equations for debris reinforced beam. Uh, first of all, do you know why do we need debris reinforced beam? When we design the singly reinforced beam, we say that we must make sure that the x of the ratio is less than 0 0.45 or x is less than 0 0.45 d yeah? okay but sometimes when the moment is very large then we have a situation where if we still design it as a single reinforced beam then the x will be greater than 0.45d okay so when x is less than 0.45d k is less than 0.167 when x is greater than 0.45d then k will be greater than 0.167 okay so we are not allowed to design a beam where the behavior is like this okay because we want ductile failure of our beam that we have designed okay we want to make sure that our beam will fail in tension failure or it's under reinforce okay so what happens if we have a beam that is single reinforced and having this situation Okay, where x is greater than 0.45d okay so we need to provide compression reinforcement in order to help the concrete to carry some of the compression so that the compression zone of the concrete can be reduced and we make sure that the x is brought back to 0.45d which is the maximum okay of x value but in this case we need to provide compression reinforcement okay on top of the beam and then the tension reinforcement is still at the bottom of the beam for positive bending moment so for a debris reinforced section is shown in this uh, figure A here where we have the tension reinforcement as well as the compression reinforcement which we use AS prime to denote compression reinforcement cross sectional area okay and then for tension reinforcement we still use back the same symbol AS huh? okay and then the maximum deformation in concrete is still 0 0.0035 where epsilon cu2 or epsilon cu3 is equals to 0 0.0035 okay and in this case we are using the maximum x over d ratio or we are using maximum x value or maximum uh, neutral axis depth value as 0. 45d okay and then for the concrete rectangular stress block is still looks the same as in the case of a single reinforced beam because the maximum stress is still 0 0.567 fck and then when we know that x is equal to 0 0.45d okay then the 0.8x okay the depth of the compression block okay will be 0 0.8 times 0 0.45d so we get 0 0.36d okay and then for the depth of the compression reinforcement we use d prime to denote its depth all right so that gives us the distance of the compression reinforcement to the 
tension reinforcement is D minus D prime. Okay, and then this is 0 0.567 FCK times 0 0.36 D times B. Yeah? So we will be getting 0 0.204 FCK BD. And then for the moment arm Z is equals to D minus 0 0.4 X or D minus 0 0.4 times 0 0.45 D so we get 0 0.82 D okay so that's how we get all the terms in these diagrams here okay and then the stress in the steel in tension is FYD yeah, or the design stress which is 0 0.87 FYK multiplied by the total cross-sectional area of the tension steel as then we get the total tension uh, in the tension reinforcement and then for the compression reinforcement we assume that the compression reinforcement is yielding uh. i said we assume uh, the compression reinforcement is yielding because sometimes compression reinforcement does not yield, eh? so bear in mind. Okay, but first we assume that it's yielding. And then we multiply that with the total cross-sectional area as prime. That will give us the total compression from the compression reinforcement. Now let us look at this diagram here. Okay, so when we sum moment, okay, about this point here okay by taking the moment in the anti-clockwise direction as positive okay then we are going to get the moment of resistance m is equals to 0 0.87 fyk as prime multiply by d minus d prime plus 0 0.204 fck bd multiplied by 0 0.82 d okay or we call it z eh? okay z is equals to 0 0.82 d so if we solve for this uh, equation here, like what is shown in this solution here, we will get the final equation like this. Huh? Okay, so this is the design equation when we assume that the stress in the compression reinforcement is yielding. Okay, so I mentioned that we assume that the compression still is yielding huh? because sometimes the compression is not yielding so we'll look at that in the next section yeah okay so equation 3.15 is the design formula for compression reinforcement of double reinforced section based on Eurocode 2 there is no requirement for minimum compression reinforcement there is only requirement for maximum reinforcement which is the same as tension reinforcement that is 0 0.04 AC or 0 0.04 times BH okay and then for force equilibrium of this diagram here we have 0 0.87 FYK AS equals to 0 0.204 FCK BD plus 0 0.87 FYK AS prime so we have 0 0.87 FYK AS is equals to 0 0.204 FCK BD plus 0 0.87 FYK AS prime. Okay, so multiplying this equation by the liver arm Z, which is equals to 0 0.82 D, we get this equation here. And then solving for this, we will get the final equation like this. Huh? Okay. 
So in this case also, we assume that the compression steel is yielding. Eh? If the compression steel is not yielding, then the equation may look different. Okay. So equation 3.18 is the design formula for tension reinforcement of Dabri reinforced section according to Eurocode 2. The requirements for minimum and maximum reinforcements follow the single reinforced section, that is equation 3.11 and equation 3.12 for the minimum reinforcement of uh, tension steel and also maximum reinforcement of tension steel. Eh? Next, we want to look at the situation where the compression reinforcement is not yielding. Eh? So in this case, we want to find where is the location of the strain where it is equals to 0 0.0022 where is the U strain of the steel. Eh? Okay. So any strain below this location here will be less than the U strain of the steel. So if the location of the compression reinforcement is below this location, then the compression steel is not yielding. Okay? And then anywhere above this location here, the strain is more than 0 0.00. .00 2, 2. Okay, so if the compression reinforcement is within this zone here, then the compression steel is yielding. If the compression steel is located below this 0 0.0022 strain, then the compression steel is not yielding. So now we want to relate the epsilon S prime to the epsilon Cu2. So we have a strain distribution like this. And then this is the location of the compression steel. So we have V prime. Okay. And then the strain in the compression steel, we use epsilon S prime to denote the strain here. And then the maximum compressive strain in the concrete epsilon Cu2 is 0 0.0035. Okay, and then the depth of the neutral axis is denoted by x. Huh? So now we can use the principle of similar triangle to relate epsilon S prime, D prime, epsilon Cu2, and x. Huh? So epsilon S prime over X minus D prime is equals to 0 0.0035 over X. So solving for epsilon S prime, we will be getting epsilon S prime is equals to X minus D prime over X times 0 0.0035. For the compression reinforcement to reach the U strength, the strain epsilon S prime must be at least equal to the U stress over Young's modulus of steel. So in the stress strength curve of steel, we have observed that the U stress is the design stress FYD and then the U strain is epsilon Y. Okay, and then this is the Young's modulus. So at this point here, okay, we can relate the strain epsilon y to the Young's modulus and FYD with this equation here, okay, which is the same as this equation there. Therefore, 0 0.87 FYK over ES is smaller or equal to X minus D prime over X times 0 0.0035. And then for FYK equals to 500 megapascal, 
and Young's modulus of steel equals to 200,000 megapascal. We have D prime over X should be smaller or equal to 0 0.38. Okay, so therefore, as long as D prime over X does not exceed 0 0.38 the compression reinforcement can be assumed to reach the design strength or use strength of 0.87 FYK. Eh? If D prime over X exceeds 0.38, a reduced stress FS prime should be used. Okay. So what this means is that when the compression steel is located at 0.38 X, okay, the steel will reach a strain of 0 0.0022 which is equals to the U strain okay and then if the steel is placed above this location then the steel will reach U stress huh? and beyond okay so that is what it means by this term here D prime over X is smaller or equal to 0 0.38 okay if the steel is located below this location okay then this corresponds to d prime over x which is more than 0 0.38 okay then the steel will not be yielding huh? Okay, so meaning that this corresponds to d prime over x, which is smaller than 0 0.38. So now let us look at the case where the compression steel is placed below this u strain, which is 0 0.0022. So anywhere below this location here, if we put the compression steel below this location, then the compression steel is not yielding. So that is means by if D prime over X exceeds 0 0.38, a uh, reduced stress FS prime should be used. Huh? So from figure 3.9b, which is the same as the illustration that I've shown here. Okay, so in this case, if epsilon s prime is here, okay, let's say if the location of the compression steel is here, then this is epsilon s prime. Okay, so similarly, we can use the principle of similar triangle. And epsilon s prime is equals to x minus d prime over x times 0 0.0035. Okay. And then from the stress strength curve here, we have something like this where this is epsilon s prime. Now epsilon s prime is less than epsilon y. Eh? Okay. So I mean that we can get epsilon s prime and fs prime compatibility from the stress strength curve here okay so this is young's modulus so we get strain which is epsilon s prime is equals to fs prime over young's modulus huh? okay so if we bring young's modulus of steel es to the other side of the equation okay then we will be getting the stress of the compression steel equation okay so the value of stress in the compression reinforcement from equation 3.19 which is this equation here must be used in the denominator of equation 3.15 in place of 0.87 FYK in order to calculate the area of the compression reinforcement AS prime. So that is AS prime is equals to K minus K balance FCK BD square over 
f s prime d minus d prime so now the stress in the steel is not u stress eh? so we must use f s prime okay because the stress f s prime is less than the u stress of 0 0.87 f y k okay and then the formula for the area of tension reinforcement has to be rewritten to give something like this as well if the compression is not yielding eh? okay so we have additional term here to relate the non yielding stress fs prime to the u stress fyd eh? which is 0 0.87 fyk so now let us look at one example which is similar to example 3.2 but the moment due to load effects is 750 kN meter okay and by assuming that the location of the compression steel is at 60 mm okay so in this case we want to know what is the x over the ratio of the beam that we have designed in this case so we still uh, start the design by checking x over d ratio but we will check k value instead of x over d eh? okay so when we calculate k value then is more than the k balance of 0 0.167 so meaning that if we still want to design this beam to a singly reinforced section then the x will be greater than 0 0.45 d okay which is not allowed in eurocode 2 design eh? okay so that means we have to bring this neutral axis depth back to 0 0.45 d okay and then we put in compression reinforcement at d prime eh? so once we get k greater than k balance then we know that we need compression reinforcement okay in order to reduce x over d to 0 0.45 or x equals to 0 0.45 d okay so now we want to find compression steel area as prime by first assuming the yielding of compression reinforcement yeah? okay so you just substitute k k balance fck b d and uh, d prime and we get the required compression reinforcement area as 518 square millimeter and then maximum compression reinforcement is 0 0.04 ac so that is 7000 square millimeter and then from tension steel area as so to find tension steel area as we use the design equation that we have derived just now and in this case we still assume that the compression reinforcement is yielding okay so it's equals to 3180 square millimeter and then when we calculate the uh, as minimum based on the previous example it is 270 square millimeter and then the maximum reinforcement is 7000 square millimeter so based on these two information of as prime required and as required so this is the compression reinforcement and then this is the tension reinforcement so for the bar design okay we refer to table a in your design guidebook so just now i mentioned that we want to use 20 mm bars as compression reinforcement and the required area for the compression reinforcement is 518 square millimeter 
So two numbers of 20 mm bars is sufficient to provide 628 square millimeter of cross section. Eh? And then for the tension reinforcement, I mentioned that we want to use 32 mm bars. Okay, so in this case, the required steel area is 3180 square millimeter. So four numbers of it will be sufficient to provide 3217 square millimeter. So we provide two H20 top bars where the provided steel area is 628 square millimeter and then the provided compression steel is less than the maximum reinforcement cross-sectional area so it's okay and then for the bottom bars or the tension reinforcement we provide 4H32 and the provided steel area is 3 Two one seven square millimeter. Okay, so this provided steel is more than the minimum steel, which is two hundred and seventy square millimeter, and then is less than the maximum reinforcement area that is seven thousand square millimeter. And then the x over d ratio, as discussed in the preceding section, x over d ratio is zero point four five. If we design using the design equations because the design equations are derived based on x equals to 0.45 d so it's equals to 293 mm okay and now we want to check the d prime of x ratio okay so d prime of x ratio is 0.204 which is less than 0.38 so the compression reinforcement has reached its U strength, so no modification of compression steel stress is needed. Huh? So what this means is that the location of the compression steel is above 0.38x, huh? where at 0.38x the strain is 0.00 so in our design the location of the compression steel is at 0.204 X okay so D prime is equals to 0.204 X and it's smaller than 0.38 X so meaning that the strain the epsilon s prime is greater than the u strain so the compression steel is yielding in this case all right next we want to look at the design procedure for rectangular beams uh, following the euro code 2 design so the first step is to calculate k using equation 3.6a which is k equals to m over f c k b d square after that we calculate k balance so in this course we only take k balance as equals to 0 0.167 and we ignore this equation here if k is smaller or equal to k balance then proceed to step 2 so meaning that the beam has only tension reinforcement so meaning that we only need to design for tension reinforcement meaning that our beam will be a singly reinforced beam okay and then the area of the steel cross section is given by this design equation as equals to m over 0.87 fyk z and the moment arm z is given by this design equation also which is z equals to d open bracket 0 0.5 plus square root of 0 0.25 minus k over 1.134 and then cross bracket if we get k greater than k balance from step one okay 
then we have to design the beam with compression reinforcement as well as tension reinforcement so in this case we will have a doubly reinforced beam okay so the design equation for the compression reinforcement assuming yielding of the compression steel is this equation and then as we have seen uh, before if d prime over x is greater than 0 0.38 then the compression steel is not yielding huh? so we use equation 3.19 to calculate the compressive stress in the compression reinforcement which is given as fs prime equals to 700 times in bracket 1 minus d prime over x and then cross bracket so what it means here is that when the compression steel is not yielding then the level of the compression steel d prime is greater than 0.38x okay where the compression steel stress is epsilon s prime which is less than the u strain of 0.0022 in which this dimension is 0.38x huh? so in this case epsilon s prime is smaller than the u strain of 0.0022 therefore the compression steel stress is less than the u stress and we have to use this equation to calculate the stress in the compression steel and then we substitute 0.87 fyk from this equation here and this becomes fs prime where the value is less than 0.87 fyk so these two equations are actually similar except that for the stress in the compression steel so one equation is for yielding of compression reinforcement and then the other equation for the compression steel that is not yielding where d prime is greater than 0.38x or d prime over x is greater than 0.38 if the compression steel is yielding with d prime over x is smaller or equal to 0.38 then the area of tension reinforcement as is computed using this equation which is equation 3.18 as derived before in this equation z is the moment arm given by equation 3.10 by substituting k equals to k balance into the equation that is z equals to d times open bracket 0.5 plus square root of 0.25 minus k balance over 1.134 and then cross bracket yeah. and then if d prime over x is greater than 0.38 meaning that the compression steel is not yielding so as we have seen just now when compression is not yielding meaning that the level of the compression steel d prime is greater than 0.38x so this strain in the steel epsilon s prime is smaller than the u strain of 0.0022 at the level of 0.38x yeah? so in order to calculate the tension steel area now we have a term that is multiplied to as prime in the equation where it is fs prime over 0.87 fyk because in this case fs prime is less than 0.87 fyk yeah? so the area of the compression steel reinforcement has to be adjusted according to the actual stress of fs prime and then we add to this term here to get the total cross-sectional area for the tension reinforcement 
that's all for the lecture in this video thank you very much for listening